Next time you're out on the street, take a look around. Those towering skyscrapers and cars you see, they're all made out of steel. Steel is the very thing that makes up most of these structures, and you'd be surprised to know that there's a whole process to make steel itself. The Raw Material Making steel starts with finding the right kind of raw materials, which are coal, iron ore pellets, and limestone. These raw materials play a crucial role in the whole steel production stage. In the first stage, these raw materials are taken to the steel-making facility with extreme care. To preserve the quality of coal, some protective measures are taken with extreme caution, like spraying the pile of coal with a coat that is a mixture of oil and water. What this does is create a protective dust minimizing layer over the coal and make sure the quality is intact. Then there are iron ore pellets, another important element in the making of steel, and these too have to be handled with care. These pellets are delivered to the ore field and transported using cranes and conveyor belts to another processing system. The next step involves the coke oven battery. The coke oven battery. The coke oven battery typically consists of several narrow oven chambers, where the coal goes through a process of baking for almost 18 hours. What this 18-hour baking does is that it makes the coal go into metamorphosis to turn the coal into coke. During the whole process of the coal's transformation, coke oven gas is generated as a valuable byproduct. This gas, along with some other chemical byproducts used, is then collected and cleaned to be used later as a fuel source in different parts of the steel making process. After the coal is done baking, the red hot coke is pushed out of the oven and the temperature is properly tempered down using water. Following this process, the coke is screened by size to ensure uniformity, and the resulting product is transported to the blast furnace. The Blast Furnace the part where the blast furnace comes is an important part of the whole steel making process. In this part of the process, the furnace gets loaded with a combination of essential raw materials, namely iron ore pellets, coke, and limestone. Iron ore is there as the primary source of iron, while the coke is there to act as a fuel for high temperature reactions, and limestone just helps in removing any kind of impurity. Inside the blast furnace, these materials go through intense heat that exceeds 1000 degrees. This high temperature is critical for the reduction of iron ore, transforming it into molten iron. The reduction process involves the combustion of coke, producing carbon monoxide, which reacts to iron ore. As a result, molten iron settles down at the bottom of the furnace due to its higher density, while the lighter slag forms a layer at the top. The tapping of molten iron is a carefully orchestrated process that involves the use of a hydraulic drill to pierce the furnace's tap hole. The molten iron is then directed into runners, channeling it into insulated rail cars or torpedo cars. Another thing to note is that the molten iron that exits the furnace carries really high levels of sulfur, which can detrimentally impact the quality of the ensuing steel. The Desulfurization Process to remove the high amounts of sulfur, the desulfurization process is a must. It has to be removed because high levels of sulfur can affect the quality of the final steel product. So, for better quality, we go to a desulfurization plant. Different methods are used when it comes to desulfurization. You can inject desulfurizing agents, like lime or other chemical compounds, into the molten iron to react with sulfur and form compounds that can easily be separated resulting in a reduction of the sulfur content. This reduction is crucial for meeting stringent quality standards, because more sulfur would mean the final product would end up brittle and not as tough as it should be. Other than its impact on the product quality, desulfurization also aligns with environmental considerations. Once the desulfurization process is complete, the molten iron is ready to progress to other stages of steel production. Basic Oxygen Steel Making the basic oxygen steel making, which is also called the oxygen converter process, takes place in a specialized vessel called a basic oxygen furnace. This is a large pear-shaped structure lined with refractory material to endure the high temperatures involved. In this vessel, the molten iron is transformed into high-quality steel through a carefully orchestrated series of steps. In the initial stages, the essential ingredients for basic oxygen steel making, like liquid iron, are collected. Then, high purity oxygen is forcefully blown into the surface of the molten metal through a top lance. This infusion of oxygen triggers a series of reactions with impurities present in the molten iron, 
oxidizing them and forming slag. The slag, full of impurities, is then carefully removed from the furnace. Once the oxygen reacts with carbon, silicon and other impurities, it converts them into oxides that rise to the surface as slag. This simultaneous oxidization and impurity removal process is what refines the steel. The Ladle Metallurgy Phase This phase is another important phase in the making of steel. The primary process of the stage is to fine-tune the chemical composition and temperature of the molten steel, enabling precise adjustments to meet specific customer requirements and quality standards. The first part of ladle metallurgy is sampling and testing. Steel samples are carefully taken out from the ladle to assess different properties, like chemical composition, temperature and cleanliness, to follow specific industry standards. Another crucial part is adding alloying elements to the molten steel in the ladle. This step involves elements like chromium, nickel and manganese to tailor the steel to its intended use. During this phase, desulfurization might be necessary to reduce sulfur levels in the molten steel for better and enhanced quality. Ladle metallurgy is used in making ultra-low carbon steel that is to be used in applications like automotive manufacturing. The Casting and Solidification Phase By now, the steel is made, but it's in its molten form. It has to be cast and solidified into a desired shape, which is usually in the form of slabs. In this stage, the molten steel that has been through the whole refining phase is directed to a continuous casting process. This is where the molten steel is poured into a tun dish, which is more of a reservoir before the steel goes through a series of water-cooled molds. Continuous casting is a widely used process that allows the steel to solidify into semi-finished products like slabs. As the molten steel moves through the molds, it undergoes a controlled solidification process where the outer surface of the steel solidifies first, forming a protective shell. This shell is actually the thing that supports the weight of the still liquid interior, preventing deformation. After the initial cooling phase, another cooling phase is held to ensure uniform solidification and better steel quality by further refining the microstructure of the steel. The Hot Rolling Phase it's time for the semi-finished steel slabs to go through a transformation to get their final thickness and dimensions. These steel slabs are first exposed to intense heat in a reheat furnace. This heating process typically reaches temperatures of around 1200 degrees Celsius to render the steel malleable and ready for shaping. This high temperature allows for easier manipulation of the material. After reheating, the steel slabs go through a roughing mill where there are a series of rolls designed to slowly reduce the thickness of the steel. Passing the steel back and forth between these rolls causes these rolls to reduce in thickness just enough for further refining. Scale removal is another important step. After hot rolling, some residue is left on the steel called scale. This is removed using high-pressure water sprays to eliminate the scales, ensuring the surface quality of the steel. The steel is then sent off to the finishing mill, a section where precise control is exerted through computer systems. In the finishing mill, the strip's thickness is further reduced according to customer specifications. Once the desired thickness is achieved, water is sprayed once again to cool the steel strip. What do you think about the steel making process? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to leave us a thumbs up. And do not forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to always be updated with the most exciting content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another video.